Hello everybody, my name is Owen and I work for Amphibian and Reptile Conservation as an Engagement and Education Officer. Within Amphibian and Reptile Conservation, I work as part of a project called Snakes in the Heather and my main aim as an Education Officer is to tell people about some of the things that make snakes and lizards such fascinating animals. Before you watch today's video lesson, you'll have need to have watched another lesson, Reptiles of the UK, which will teach you about identifying the UK reptiles. Once you've seen that, watch this video, and the learning outcomes for this video are to understand that reptiles have evolved to suit the habitats they live in, using one of the examples we learned about. Let's start by asking, what is evolution? Have you heard of the word evolution? Sometimes you might have heard that birds evolved from dinosaurs. That's one example. So evolution is the process by which different kinds of living organism are believed to have developed from earlier forms during the history of the earth. So to make that a bit simpler, evolution is, for us we'll think about animals. So evolution is animals that have changed from how they used to be over millions of years. And the example I said just now is how dinosaurs evolved to become birds. So now let's look at those four pictures and think about how they have evolved. To do that, we're going to do a little bit of revision. So I want you to think about adaptations. I want you to think about how each of these animals is adapted so what adaptations does a polar bear have? What adaptations does a sand lizard have? What adaptations does a crocodile have? And what adaptations does a jellyfish have? Let's start with the polar bear. Well, the polar bear has thick fur. That means it can live somewhere cold. The sand lizard is cold blooded. That means it can eat less often because it warms itself in the sun. The crocodile has a long, thick tail that helps it swim. And the jellyfish can move around the ocean. So what do all adaptations have in common? Well, adaptations, animals are usually adapted for the habitats they live in. So the first part of our, our revision was looking at what are adaptations. The second part is what are adaptations in relation to habitats? So what are habitats? A habitat is an area where an animal lives. So now let's look at these examples again. So how are these animals adapted to their habitats? So what I want you to do now is for every single picture, I'm going to briefly call out the name of the animal and I want you to look at the habitats on the right hand side and call out some of the ways in which you think that animal is adapted to live in that habitat. So first of all, how is the polar bear adapted to live in its habitat? I'll give you a moment to call out some answers. How is the sand lizard adapted to live in its habitat? I'll give you a moment to call out some answers. How is the crocodile adapted to live in its habitat? I'll give you a moment to call out some answers. And how is the jellyfish adapted to live in its habitat? I'll give you a moment to call out some answers. Okay, so what I want you to think about is the fact that these animals are adapted to their habitats. And adaptations happen over millions of years. Adaptations to the habitats they live in happen over millions and millions of years. And that is essentially what evolution is. Evolution is developing adaptations to suit the habitat over a really long amount of time. So now let's look at the polar bear specifically. We're still thinking about what is evolution. And if we're thinking 
evolution is the way in which different animals have changed over millions of years from the way they used to be. So how might a polar bear have changed to suit living in the cold environment over millions of years? Well, if you can imagine two polar bears reproducing. Now, let's say you had one polar bear that had really thick fur and one polar bear that had managed to live but had slightly less thick fur. And what if those two polar bears, the one with really thick fur and the one with slightly thick, less thick fur, had three children? They had three cubs and two of those cubs had thick fur and one didn't have thick fur. And what we can think about here is the animals, the babies, the cubs that had thicker fur would be more likely to survive in the cold habitat where the polar bear lives. And if the bears with thicker fur would be more likely to survive, the bears with thicker fur would also be more likely to have children of their own. And those children would have thicker fur. So if you can think of that process, bears that have thicker fur because it's cold, they live uh, more successfully in their habitat. They're more likely to have children of their own. And the bears with thicker fur have more uh, more children with thicker fur, etc, etc. You can see how polar bears could develop thicker and thicker fur over hundreds or millions of years. But what about our reptiles? So let's start by thinking about what our reptiles have in common. So you've had a few lessons before about reptiles and you've watched the reptiles of the UK video. So what are, do these reptiles have in common? How are these reptiles adapted to live in their habitats? So I want you to have a think and I want you to call out at home the ways that reptiles are adapted to their habitats. And I will give you a minute to do that. So what are some of the ways that snakes are adapted for their habitats? And what are some of the ways that lizards are adapted for their habitats? And what do all these reptiles have in common? Okay, how did you do? What did you remember? Here are some of the things that reptiles have in common. Reptiles have scales, so they have these scales instead of fur or feathers. And these scales help them keep in moisture, help them move around, all sorts of things. What else? Reptiles are cold-blooded. So what this means is reptiles use the sun to help them warm up. So in the habitats they live in, they have patches where they can warm up in the sunshine in the UK. They use those patches to warm up, which means they can get some of their energy from this and it means they can eat less food, which helps them survive better. And finally, what else do the UK's reptiles have in common? What else do all reptiles have in common? Well, reptiles have skeletons. All reptiles have skeletons inside their body and that includes a backbone. What else do these reptiles have in common? And I want you to keep thinking about evolution. So how have these reptiles evolved over millions of years to have these things? So another thing that all the reptiles have in common in the UK is that they are all carnivores. So reptiles in the UK, they all eat other animals. So there's another video in this series about what reptiles eat. If you don't know about what the reptiles of the UK eat, you can look at that video, but they do all eat other animals. What else do they have in common? Well, in the UK, they all bask. So what that means is that they basically sunbathe. So they go into areas where the sun is warming the earth and they go and lie there and they warm up. And that warming up means that they can get a bit more energy to move around more quickly. And it means that they don't need to eat quite as much because they don't use their food to help them stay warm. Instead, they use their environment to help them stay warm. So one of the things they all have in common is that they bask because they're cold-blooded. 
What else do all the UK reptiles have in common? What is an adaptation all the UK reptiles have in common for the habitats that they live in? And what might this have to do with evolution based on where they are in the world? Well, they all have life cycles that re revolve around the seasons. So again, there's another video in this series that's all about the life cycles of the UK's reptiles that you can watch for if you want to know a bit more. But what we really need to know is that we live in a part of the world with four seasons and all the reptiles in the UK are adapted to live here. So they all hibernate over the winter when it's cold to save their energy. In the spring, they all become more active, finding mates and mating. And then over the summer, they become more active. Their young develop, perhaps uh, in the autumn or late summer, hatching from eggs or the animals give birth. And then they feed a bit more before it starts to get colder in late autumn into winter where they go into hibernation again. And that happens every year. So a quick reminder, what else do the UK reptiles have in common? How have they evolved to have these things? Well, they're all predators or carnivores. They all bask when they're cold and they would all seek shade when it's really hot. So they will go and find somewhere that's got that's cooler when it's a really hot day. And they hibernate in the winter, which helps them keep a more constant temperature around the year. And they all have life cycles, which are based around the seasons based on where we live in the world. But what about snakes specifically? How are snakes adapted to suit their environment and how may this lead to evolution? So what I want you to do is think of some snake adaptations. So you've got the adaptations we just talked through. See if you can think of any more and call them out and I will give you a, a few moments to think of some snake adaptations. So look at the picture there. How are snakes adapted to suit their environment? So in this case, how might a smooth snake be adapted to suit its heathland habitat there? Okay, so one of the adaptations that is very obvious for a snake is that snakes do not have any legs. So over millions of years, snakes have evolved to lose their legs. So why did snakes evolve to have no legs? And this is a really, really interesting example of evolution. So a quick reminder, evolution is the way in which different animals change over millions of years to suit the places where they live. So in this case, we're going to talk about why snakes have evolved to lose their legs. So the first thing I need you to know is that snakes were once lizards. So snakes millions and millions and millions of years ago were actually like lizards in that they had, they still had legs. So we know from evidence from the, from the fossil record that snakes used to have legs like lizards today. So what we're going to do to think about the way in which snakes have evolved to have no legs is to play a little game. And I really want you to join in at home. So what I need you to do is imagine these lizards. So imagine these lizards living in an area where there are lots of tunnels, lots of plants, and there are animals that they're trying to catch that are moving down these tunnels and moving down into gaps between plants and things like that. I want you to picture what would happen if a lizard that had really big legs was trying to catch an animal that went down a tunnel that was a bit too big for it. It wouldn't be able to get down would it? So what I want you to do is stand up now and go and find the nearest door and I want you to put your arms and legs out really wide, stretch your arms out as wide as you can and don't move them and try and walk through that door and I'll give you a second to do that and then come back. 
Okay, what you'll see is if you had your big arms out, you wouldn't be able to get down that gap. And that would be the same as a lizard that was trying to find its prey down a tunnel. So what would happen is that sometimes these animals would be less likely to be able to catch their food. So animals with slightly smaller limbs might do better at scrambling down these tunnels to get their, their food, to get their prey. So what would happen if that kept happening over lots and lots of years? Well, the animals with the smaller limbs might get more foods. So they might be better at surviving. And so they might uh, be more likely to reproduce. So now what I want you to do again is to stand up again and now tuck your arms in by your side and just walk through the door and come back. I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, so you could see that with your arms tucked in by your sides, it was really easy to go through the door. You had loads of space. Well, imagine the same thing with lizards in the tunnels. As over millions of years, the lizards were surviving with smaller, uh, with smaller limbs, those lizards were then were able to reproduce. And over more time, the lizards with smaller limbs kept doing this. They kept using these tunnels, catching their prey, and the legs were still getting in the way. So eventually they lost their legs altogether and became like legless lizards. And that's much like our slow worms today. So now, over millions of years, getting down these tunnels with the limbs in the way, they went from being lizards with limbs to having no limbs at all. And they didn't even need what was left over within their skeletons that made them legless lizards. So if you picture the slow worm, it still has bits of its skeleton inside its body that we know it's a legless lizard. Well, this was taking up extra energy. So over years and years and years of the snakes going down the tunnels, the legless lizards going down the tunnels, catching their prey, they didn't need these extra bits of their skeleton, so they evolved to lose them. And that's how they became today's modern snakes. Now, one question you might have then is why didn't all lizards evolve to lose their legs to become snakes? And the reason that not all lizards became snakes is because they all had different adaptations that served them in different ways. So not all these lizards were needing to go down tunnels to catch their prey. So we still have lizards because they are adapted to suit their own habitats. Now we're just going to finish by thinking about a modern example. So I want you to think about how do the adaptations snakes have evolved suit a smooth snake living in a heathland. And as a reminder, heathland habitat has lots of heather and small plants that provide shelter. It is food, it is plants that are eaten by insects, which are eaten by birds and lizards. And then these lizards are eaten by the smooth snake. And it has open areas for basking. So it has lots of places where the Smooth snake can go out and warm up, patches of sand where it can do that. So how do the adaptation snakes have evolved to suit a smooth snake living in a heathland? Well, it has the scales, that means it can move around uh, that habitat well. It has, it is cold blooded, so that means it can, it can conserve energy by using warm patches in that habitat to uh, get itself warm to move around quicker which means it can eat less food because it doesn't use food to get warm uh, what else what else well it doesn't have the limbs so if you think of lots of those plants lots of the heather plants it can it can wriggle in in and around the heather plants so it can escape predators and live in amongst those heather plants when it's not out basking so those are just a few ways in which smooth snakes have evolved to suit living in a habitat. So over millions of years, evolution has happened and smooth snakes and the other UK's reptiles are well adapted to live in heathlands. Okay, so that is the end of today's lesson. So now we're just gonna finish with a quick quiz and I want you to call out the answers at home. So question one, adaptations help animals to survive in their habitats. Is that true or false? That one is true. Question two, evolution happens right away. Is that true or false? That one is false. Evolution happens over millions of years. Animals evolve over millions of years. Question three, snakes have evolved their adaptations over millions of years. Is that true or false? 
That one is of course true, we just talked about that. So snakes have evolved to lose their limbs over millions of years. They've evolved in other ways such as having scales, such as being cold blooded, uh, such as some of the adaptations that make them good predators over millions of years as well. And the final question, the ancestors of snakes had legs. Is that true or false? That one is true as well. So brilliant guys, that is the end of today's lesson and remind ourselves that the learning outcome was to understand that reptiles have evolved to suit the habitats they live in using an example from the UK and we've done that. So that is brilliant. If you have any questions about what you've learned today or any questions about the education programs related to reptiles, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me and I've put my email address on the slide here. Goodbye.